Hello, everyone, and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Ruby Engineer? This is a Ruby game show, and I am your host. Look, that's me. Sorry. Um, my name is Drew Bragg. I, contrary to popular belief, am from a city called Philadelphia, not a state called Oklahoma. I am a staff... <laughs> ah, Jason Charns. Uh, I'm a staff engineer at a lovely company called Within3. I am also the host of a podcast called Code and the Coding Coders Who Code It. If you can't tell, I'm not great at coming up with good names. I also uh, co-organize the monthly meetup for Philly RB. It's a Philadelphia Rubyist meetup. You do not have to be from Philadelphia to join us because it's all virtual now. Just come and hang out with other cool Rubyists. I can be found on the internet most places as DR Breck. So the not fun stuff out of the way first. Most of the Ruby syntax you're about to see is valid Ruby. It'll run. I don't recommend putting it in production. You can use it to confuse your coworkers, play practical jokes on them. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can also use it to get a better understanding of how Ruby works. Just don't put it in production. It's not a good idea. Just don't do it. Um, I love that Ruby is a weird language. I love that we can be expressive with it. I think it's great to keep Ruby weird. I like fun Ruby. It's so whimsical. There's so many cool things we can do with it. But we're professionals. We need to act as such and we owe a debt to our future selves and our coworkers to keep Ruby readable. I'm going to try and drive home that point today in a fun way. We're going to play a game, a Ruby game show called Who Wants to Be a Ruby Engineer? I have some lovely contestants here up in the front row, and they're going to get up one at a time and try and guess the output of a small snippet of Ruby. I am not a monster. It will be multiple choice. They'll have A, B, C, or D to choose from. If they're still stuck, they've got two powers they can use. They can pair program, which they'll just select someone from the audience to give them a hand, or they can search Stack Overflow. Spoiler alert, you're all Stack Overflow. We'll take a poll and go with whatever gets the most votes. If a contestant gets a question wrong, they will sit down. Contestants probably will get them wrong. I went out of my way to make these kind of hard. We should applaud them when they get a question wrong, because that is not a failure of knowledge. That is a success in learning. This is weird Ruby for a reason. But it is a game show, so I do have some awesome prizes, thanks to some awesome people. Um, Brittany Martin from the Ruby on Rails podcast. Donated a bunch of cool stuff. If you don't listen to the podcast, you absolutely should get on that. Uh, the one and only Andrew Mason contributed some money and let me go on a spending spree. You probably know him from Remote Ruby or Ruby for All or the Ruby Radar newsletter because he does all the things. And the one and only Andy Kroll donated some wise, poignant guides to Ruby, which is an awesome book. So... Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. So let's get our first contestant. Come on down. Anyone who wants to volunteer to go first. That's yours. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I just need you to introduce yourself. Tell us your name, where you're from, and how long you've been working with Ruby. Uh, my name is Rock Davenport. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, by way of Brooklyn, New York. There we go. There we go. And uh, I've been working with Ruby for two years. Excellent. All right. Are you ready to play? No. Okay. Well, we're going to do it anyway. So I will give you the first question. It's going to be a warm-up question so that you know how this works and you're not going in blind. It's so everybody else can get a feel for how this is going to go. If you get it right, great. Bonus points for you. If you get it wrong, you still stay up and we'll do a real question. Sound good? Fair enough. Excellent. So, your first question, if you take a look up at the screen. <laughs> let me get to the question first. All right, so, like I said for the folks in the back, this is the size of my Ruby syntax. You may want to move up. You may want to move over here. It's a little easier to see. 
All right, so we're gonna have one with two colons, a plus, some parens with a two inside. And what are we going to get? Is it going to be A, three, B, a no method error, C, a 12, or D, a syntax error? A. Excellent, nice work. First question down. Now, for those of you who are going, wait, what? How did that give us three? You probably are familiar with the double colon as a namespace resolution operator. It's how we move through constants and do constant lookups and things of that nature, but it can also be used to call instance methods. Since one is an instance of an integer, we can just call plus on it and give it an argument of two. The double colon plus is equivalent to sending the symbol plus, or more commonly, one plus two. Yeah. For the love of maths, <laughs> please use one plus two. Don't do this. Don't, just don't, just don't do that. Uh, yeah, well, don't put it in production. All right, you ready for a real question? You yeah. great? All right, so here we go. Take a look up at the screen. One, a dot, a dot, a five, a dot, a two A. There's an underscore in there. You ready for your answers? Yes. Got A, a range error. B, a no method error. C, nil. Or D, an array with one, two, three, four, and five. Now remember, you have the powers. You can pair. You can search Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. All right. What do we think, crowd? Are we going to go with A, a range error? Hands up. A couple of people. B, a no method error. Okay, mm. more, more people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. C, nil. Yeah, a handful. Or D, the array with, whoa, that's a lot of people who don't wow. know what they're doing. Wow. What do you think? I mean, most people said D. I'm going to go with B. You're going to go with B. <laughs> Smart man, smart man. Sometimes Stack Overflow's wrong. <laughs> so for those of you who voted for D and are confused, you need to wrap ranges in parentheses in order to call methods on them because of how operator precedence works. What we just saw was equivalent to one dot dot parens five to A and integers don't have a two A method on them. So don't forget your parens. Nice work. I got lucky. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Well, let's try something a little different. We have a global variable called hello. We're going to set it to the string world. Then we're going to put hello with a pound sign and a dollar sign and a hello. So what are we going to get here? Are we going to get a syntax error, the string hello world, the literal string up there, hello, pound, dollar sign, hello, or a name error? C. C. You do still have one more power. I know. Okay. Unfortunately, no. I discovered this very fun thing with a typo and was very confused as to how things were still working. So it turns out when you're interpolating instance variables, those are the ones with the at class variables, the two ats, or global variables, you don't need the squirrely braces, curly braces, whatever you call them. You can just use the pound sign. So, round of applause for Rock, thank you for playing. All right, so I'm gonna need my next contestant. Come on down. All right. Same deal as Rock, please introduce yourself, tell us your name, where you're from, and how long you've been working with Ruby. Um, my name is Domenico Rodriguez, I am from Santiago, Dominican Republic, and two years. Great, all right, you ready to play? No. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> neither was Rock, and he did very well. So let's see how you do with this guy. We have a method called stringify, I think that's stringify, yes it is. And <laughs> shush you. 
Uh, and it takes in an argument called hash, and then we're doing it, if we have hash, we'll do hash to string. So when we call stringify, and we pass it curly braces, what do we get? Do we get A, the string of an empty hash, just two curly braces, a nil, an argument error, or a no method error? And remember, you do have your power-ups, so you can Ask Stack Overflow, although they've proven to not be great. Should have gone with chat GPT. Uh, or you can pick someone out of the crowd to help you out. So what do you think? A. Think A? Yeah. You sure? You want to use your power-ups? No? Sure? All right. No. no. It's an argument error, unfortunately. So for those of you who also thought it was A, Thank you. So you probably know that we can omit parentheses when we're, when we're calling methods and passing some variables. However, you have to be careful because when we're dealing with hashes like this, Ruby's gonna interpret that as a block. So if you need to make sure that it's passed as a hash, you need the parentheses. It's a little bit of a theme there, I think. All right, so that does mean I need my next contestant, come on down. Yeah. All right, same deal. I'm Christine. Um, I'm from uh, Queens, New York. Woo. And I've been uh, working with Ruby for about eight years, but I don't think that's gonna help me here. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me. <laughs> well, let's find out. Christine, your first question. Oh, syntax highlighting, why do you never work for me? All right, so we have a variable foo and it's set to the string bar, because I, again, don't do good with naming. And we have some regex stuff, and an equal with a tilde, and the string bar again. So what's foo? Is it the string bar, a name error, the string b, or a syntax error? And you do have your power-ups. Should have downloaded the Jeopardy theme. Yeah. Um, what's print, what's, what's print foo? Yeah. Okay. Um, Cause the double row. Stack overflow, um, pairing. A random guess? I, yeah, I'm close to <laughs> just giving a random guess. Um, I would like to pair if anyone's interested in pairing. All right, who thinks they know the answer and wants to help Christine out? Anybody? <laughs> yes. What I do saw you think? A hand. You think it's C? Okay, because that's what I was, I was thinking based on the slash W, but. Capture. Capture, Capture yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. I, I will go with C. Nice work. All right. <laughs> All right. So when we are doing regular expressions with Ruby using named captures and our equal sign with the tilde, we're going to create local variables for those named groups. We already have named variables with those names. We're going to override it. You need to be careful. I have gotten bitten by this. All right, you ready for your next one? Yeah. All right. So here's an easy one for you. We have the range one through five and we're gonna iterate over it. Next, if i double equals two dot dot i double equals four, otherwise put i. So are we going to get two, three, and four, three, one, and five, or a syntax error for using too many dots. You can't pair, but you can use Stack Overflow. Okay, so if, on the cases where we should have written the range next, if there's a range one, uh, true or false to, uh, well, you're never going to have both 
you're never, I is never going to be able to equal, they can either be false or false or true and false, but never true and true. Um, and then it's putting, right, so that can only happen. This is great. I like hearing you think out loud. This is awesome. Most people just stand up here silently uh, going, what is wrong with you? <laughs> trying, to, trying to show the work. I, a range of true to false is kind of breaking my brain. Um, Same. But, <laughs> which is why this is in here. But. Could you imagine trying to Google this? <laughs> Stack Overflow? All right, Stack Overflow, what do we think? A, two, three, four, anybody? Bueller? A couple people? B, just three? Nobody. C, one and five? All right, a couple people. Or D, a syntax error? Okay. So C or D? Yes. Yeah, Flip or a coin. D. Um, I guess the copy paste I'll be doing from Stack Overflow is going to be C one and five. C <laughs> one and five. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> nice work. Great job, Stack Overflow. You have redeemed yourself. So, for those of you who want to Google this, this is called a flip flop operator, and it hurts my head. Basically, where a flip-flop operator works is when you have a conditional inside of a loop, it will evaluate to true when the first thing evaluates to true until the last thing evaluates to true. So we're just going to skip two, three, and four, which is why we get one and five. Fun fact, this was deprecated for a while, and then they opted to keep it. <laughs> All right, you're doing good. Are you ready for another one that with, the with syntax highlighting does not yep. cooperate? <laughs> All right, sorry again about syntax highlighting. Because it works and then it doesn't work and why not? So we have a class boop, because I'm getting better with naming. And we're going to define an instance method of bang or exclamation, whatever you call it. And that's going to return beep, because naming. So not boop.new. A, false. B, true. C, beep. D, no method error. No power-ups, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're all out. I know, it's all, all on my own. Um, all by myself. Andy, I should give you a mic and have you do the music. No one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> um. I will go with A. A false. <laughs> Actually going to return B. It will return B. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The people who are like, wait, what? You're right. This is, this is interesting. So when you call the not keyword, what it actually does is it calls the bang method on the thing you're calling it on. Bang method in most places just flips it, but in this case, we overrode it, so we get beep. Don't do this in production. <laughs> All right, so that means I need another contestant. Thomas. All right, Thomas. I needed to go before you, before you get up here. <laughs> Introduce yourself, name, uh, where you're from, how long you've been doing Ruby. Yeah, my name is Thomas. Uh, I'm from Copenhagen by way of Queens. Uh, and I, uh, well, I've never written Ruby before. So I probably won't get these, and that's the reason why. Well, that's fun. <laughs> so let me introduce you to my friend called Ruby. Okay, it's a really, really nice programming language. No, seriously, really how long? Intuitive. Have you... Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I've been writing. Ruby. This is a bad example of intuitive Ruby. This is not <laughs> how you should ingest Ruby the first time. How long have you actually been doing Ruby? Uh, since 2017. Okay. So. Whatever math. 
Math. Math is hard. Seven. That's why we have Joel. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. All right. We have A. Oh, you know, you know. I like your voice better than mine. You do this. I'm really nervous. Um, Join the club. All right, one, two, and three in an array. We map over it and then just send it some symbols. Yeah. Just a couple of them, like a keyboard mash. Yeah, okay. And then, so what's A? Great. Is it one, two, and three? No method error. Syntax error. Six. Which Great. math is hard, but six is if you added them all up. Yeah, this yeah. is cool. All yeah. right. Now, you do have your power ups. You can oh, pair and you can use Stack Overflow. Yeah. Um, so before I use one of those two, because I definitely <laughs> am going to, yeah, we have this array we called math. And then we're sending it plus at uh, as a symbol. And then we're printing. Okay. Now, you got it. I would think B or C because I don't understand this. So <laughs> my brain is having a syntax error. I would, ne I would never do that to you, probably. But yeah, I think, you, I think this, is probably, uh, this probably works somehow, but I have no idea why. Uh, so I would like to pair through. All right. Who thinks they can help Thomas out? Of yeah. course you do. Brandon. Brandon, what do you Please. think? Ruin so much of my show. <laughs> I know it would have been better with negative, but that was in the last show, so now we're doing positive. Do you, <sighs> see, do you see why I called Brandon? Yeah, I know. I so would have called him too. A. That's my go to guy. <laughs> One, two, three. Yep. All right, so for Thank those you, of Brandon. you who could not hear Brandon, uh, this is how Ruby handles positive integers, and much to the point he just made, it's actually a little easier to illustrate with negatives. If we had done this with negative at, we could have created those negative numbers because negative five, five double colon minus at, and five sending that all create negative five. Yeah, don't do that. Just use negative five. I think we feel like we've established this. All right, so you're good. You ready for the next one? Yeah. Still have Stack Overflow. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. They're like 50-50 at best. I'll give you an easy one, not a lot of symbols. Okay, see if that helps. <laughs> okay. Told you there's less symbols. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Name error, syntax error, nil, true. All right, yep. so mm -hmm. we have an exclamation point yep. in parentheses. So yes. I'm guessing, well, assuming we're just calling uh, bang on object. Um, and then passing it no arguments. And if we did that, if that's what was happening, we would get one of these four uh, answers. Well played, yeah. Unfortunately, you do have to pick one. Okay, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, points for trying, but no. All right, Drew, let's stack overflow. All right, stack overflow, what do we think? A, a name error. No. B, syntax error. Okay. Two people. That was C, a chat GPT response. Yeah. C, nil. One, two, just a couple, couple. Or D, true. There you go. All I right. think we know. All right. I think we know, Drew. We're going with D. Yes. So you were actually very close. If you use parentheses just in the middle of nowhere in your application with nothing inside of it, it creates nil. And not nil is, yeah, you got it. Okay, I know I was joking, but this is why I say I've never written Ruby. <laughs> I had no idea about this. This is a head scratch. This is fun. I, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna ask Kevin this. Newton. This is his fault, uh, okay? I'm gonna use this in production. Don't do that, please. <laughs> All right, you don't have any more power-ups. Great. So I don't have to worry about you calling on Ufuk, because this is a new Fook special. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm staring him down, though. Maybe he'll give me a hint with his eyes. <laughs> Cough twice a day. <laughs> I love this one. This is the only one in here that is the exact same from the last time I gave it. 
just because I love it so much. Just so YouTube. evil. I'm going to a special place in hell. What are, what are our choices here? We got no method error, nil, name error, or the string question mark. Great. Yeah. This one has a couple more symbols, but at least it's actually only two symbols. You just use it a lot. Great. Of times. Yeah. Yeah. So Drew, what we have here. Uh, Please tell me. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. What we sometimes call question marks. Yeah. We have a colon. Yeah. And then we have two more question marks. It's a lot of question marks. And if we evaluate this with Ruby, yep. we get one of these four answers. That is, yeah, correct. But which one do we get? I was, a, I didn't want you to ask me that. Uh, um, sorry. I'm going to sort guess, of know the answer. Uh, because I don't have any more, no more help. Uh, I'm going to guess. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with no method error, A. You sure? No. You positive? No. Okay. Those question marks is what's going on in my brain right Yeah, now. there's a lot yeah. of question marks. Um, are you leading me? So I shouldn't go with A? Are never you do that. helping me as the I host? would never do that. I'm going to change my answer. I might do that. For suspense. I'm going to okay. go with... Um, I'm gonna go with D. An equally wrong answer, or? <laughs> I'm gonna go with C. <laughs> no, I heard D, I like D. I'll go with D, I'll go D's with D. D's great, D's great. Oh my God! <laughs> so this is fun with white spaces. So question mark is a special syntax for single character strings, and you can do some really crazy stuff with Unicode characters. See me after if you want to see it. Um, this is actually just a ternary with the white space removed. So if we put the white space in, it becomes a little clearer. And if we stop using special syntax and just use regular strings, we get that, which is far easier. Just use a string. Wow. Don't do that. It's a long story as to why this is a thing. It actually did something else differently before 1.9, 1.8 and older. Uh, it would return the ASCII code point. So like an A would give you 97 back, but they stopped doing that and now it just handles single character strings. Okay. Little uh, Ruby archeology span for you. Care of Nick Schwaterer. All right, easy one. Just a little take the pressure off. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna let you read this one. All right. Okay, so why don't you read it out to us? All right, we, we're defining a method here called in. Very good, right so far. With the def keyword. Yep. Yeah, uh, and in it, oh, well, it, it accepts some arguments. Um, we have a open parens, the v equals, the def keyword again, this time defining var, um, passing it an asterisk. You're doing or great. Accepting. Um, and then we're assigning that to the string bar, uh, and then we're calling to string on that, and then close parentheses. In the body of the method, <laughs> we have v, obviously. Um, of course. Two pipes, which could be or, or it could not, because who knows, uh, the string foo. Yeah. And then we're printing that. Great work. Well done. Thank you. That's why I wanted you to read it, because I couldn't have done that. All right, so are we going to get the string foo, the string bar, an argument error, or a syntax error? I will say I have no idea what def bar. Man, the way you brought the microphone up, I was like, damn, you know that that fast? <laughs> That's awesome. No. Um, D is the lucky letter. I might end up going with that. Um, but beyond that, I have no idea. V equals, and then this defining bar with an asterisk and setting that equal to the bar. That, that is wild, uh, yeah. breaking my brain. Also, where does V come from? Am I, I right? Naming variables is hard, so I went with V. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was like a trick and I was trying to get you to tell Isn't me. everything a trick in okay. this show? I'm, I'm gonna stop stalling. Um, print foo, right, 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 right. Uh, clearly. Obviously. Um, yeah, foo. A lot of murmurings. If only you could still ask that in the back. I know. I can hear people. Just speak a little louder in the back. <laughs> e equals. Oh, okay. 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 So maybe. Maybe. 
v here Maybe. You know, as a default variable, uh -huh. or a default parameter. Yeah. And we're not passing any parameters into foo, so we're gonna end up with a default. And whether or not that evaluates to true is gonna dictate whether we print whatever the heck that becomes or the string foo. So what we need to figure out is if v evaluates to true. You lost me. Oh, you said I got it. I thought you were telling me the answer. <laughs> okay, so does V evaluate to true? Well, I, I don't know. True it isn't one of the answers. Error. Otherwise, it might be a string, and a, and a string of some sort will evaluate to true, and then we'll print it. But what is that string? I don't know, because I don't understand. Oh, well, def bar accepts any arguments equals bar. Okay, so the bar might return. Okay, I'm going to go going with... Uh, B, bar. Going with B, bar. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> Got it. I'm done, I'm done. Can, I, can I abdicate? <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> we did it. All right. So when we define a method, it returns the symbol with that name of the method. So essentially what we just saw was setting v equal to the symbol bar to s. No? Okay. I thought it was cool, but whatever. You know, it's uh, fine. <laughs> I'm wearing this jacket. All right. Let's give you another one. Let's see if this one even fits on the screen. Blah. D. So... <laughs> because they cut things off, def num okay. num is five. We have an array, which is a of one, two, and three. Yeah. For num in a, put num, and then at the end, we put num one last time. So what is that very last thing that gets printed out? Is it a name error? Oh, this is amazingly borked, sorry. This is why you don't work on your slides at five in the morning. B, five, C, three, or D, nil. At least those fit on the screen. What? Yeah, I know. Sorry. No, no, not you, the code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I wrote it. <laughs> well, this is interesting. That's the point. Um, because we, we have print num, uh, and then we also have print after our for loop. So if anything, I, I mean, is, is this the last line that gets uh, outputted to the terminal? Because or yes. it's a standard output? Yeah, the, okay. very, the very last the very thing last we say. Thing yep. standard output. Very okay. last. Uh -huh. That's different. Okay. I'm going to, I mean, just my, my gut, and I could be completely wrong. I'm going to go with, uh, oh, I don't know, Drew. I can't abdicate. I can't. Nope. Bow num out. is five, and then we do a for loop. Yeah. And what's num now? Uh, right. Yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, D. Okay. Because I, that's my lucky letter. <laughs> nah. Unfortunately, it's three. Wouldn't have guessed that. Thank you. You did great. You did. Thank you you did very well. You. you did very well. This is, this is an interesting one. So a lot of people think we use each in Ruby just because it's more idiomatic, but it's actually because we pass a block to each. So we have the local scope to handle our variables. We don't have that with four. So if we're not careful, we can override methods and variables outside of itself. You have to be very careful or you can cause some very interesting bugs. All right, so I need another contestant. Come on down. Oh, you already got the mic and everything? That's awesome. Great. All right. Not that you need any introduction, but please introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and how long you've been doing Ruby. My name is Joel. I'm based in Boston, and I've been doing Ruby for 12 years. Today, I would like to be a Ruby engineer. Well, let's find out. Uh, you are. Knowing these things did not make you a Ruby engineer. This is just for fun. Because then I wouldn't be a Ruby engineer. So I don't know any of these. So this is not math, I'm sorry. But we have proc is equal to proc with two curly braces. Hello, the symbol, 
to the string proc, because naming is hard, and then two curly braces, closing it all out. So what is puts proc, bleh. let me try that one more time. What is puts proc with brackets, square brackets this time, and the string, and the symbol hello? A syntax error, much like my mouth just had. The string proc, the hash hello with proc, or an argument error. Now remember, you do have your power-ups all back, so if you don't know, you can ask if they do. So you're kind of breaking my brain here. What I, I think I'm yep. seeing is we're defining a proc within a block that returns a hash. And I think when we're calling the puts, we're invoking the proc named proc and giving it hello as an argument. And I don't know if procs care about how many arguments they get. Well, now I'm lost. And it's returning, I think it's returning the hash. I'm gonna guess C. Gonna go with C without using any power-ups whatsoever. Ding, ding, ding. This is a fun one. So there's actually a couple of things going on here. One, there's multiple ways to call a proc, and just using the square brackets is one of them. You can also use the dot square brackets and the dot parens or dot call. So that works. Procs, like you pointed out, do accept arbitrary arguments. It's lambdas that don't. And I proc never remember is, which one between the yeah, two. Yeah, I never remember either. Uh, and proc is not a keyword, which also may have been a little surprising to some folks, because it sort of looks like one. All right, so you did well. You still have your power-ups. Ready for the next question? Let's do it. I'm not tracking time, so we're just gonna go until they kick us out. All right, foo is equal to bar, and bar is equal to foo. Puts, defined foo, double and, double ampersand and, defined bar. Okay, easy enough. Is this true? The string local variable, nil, or the string expression. That's mean. <laughs> Sorry. What does defined return is the question. That's a good question. Sort of the question, actually. My gut says it's probably local variable, but I think I'd like to ask Stack Overflow. All right, Stack Overflow. Is it A, true? Okay, a couple of people think the question mark's gonna return a Boolean. Is it the string local variable? Nope. Is it nil? Or is it the string expression? Ooh. Is it the I don't know? Ah, there it is. There's everybody. Right. Stack Overflow is inconclusive. You're <sighs> anding two values here. What happens when you and strings together? I don't know. What happens? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go with C, nil. C, nil. It is the string expression. So if we're omitting parentheses, because it's always the parentheses, if we want to get local variable, which is what defined would return normally, we have to use a lower precedence operator, and. If we use the double and, it's actually going to just add parentheses for us, and it's going to create an expression and return as such. Listen, guy, I was very tired when I wrote these. Um, well, okay, well, thank you for playing. You did well. That's a tough one. I think I have time for one more. Do I have anyone who wants to try a particularly fun one? Come on down. Oh, hold on. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and how long you have been doing Ruby. I'm Joshua, I'm from Tampa, Florida. 
I've been doing Ruby on Rails for about 15 years, and I love when I find something that I don't understand why it works that way. So I'm looking forward to getting my butt kicked. Have I stumped you yet? I wasn't sure about that last one. Okay, cool. Well, take but a also, look. Also, I only came in like five minutes ago. Uh, okay, so. that's fair. That's, <laughs> fair. All right. that's fair. All right, so take a look up at the screen. We got some stuff. Dollar sign underscore is equal to 2023. That's the year we're in. And then we use two squiggly things. I believe they call those tildes. And a regex. So. Nil, <laughs> two, negative one, or a no method error. You do have your power-ups. Okay, what are the power-ups? <laughs> oh, 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 so you're right, you weren't here for them. So you can pull Stack Overflow or their Stack Overflow, we just ask them. Or you can pair with someone if you know someone knows the answer, you can ask them to give it to you. So. Anybody sending me like vibes here of, of knowledge? Of course you know the answer. I would love to hear your answer. Let's go. Engineer. What? I, I was trying to hear what you said. Oh, okay. I didn't say anything. <laughs> what do you think? He thinks it's C, negative one, for some reason. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with, with C. I'll take the advice of my pair here. Correct. All right. So this is one of those fun ones where it depends on what we're calling it on. We've got the tilde character as shorthand when we're calling it on a regular expression for that dollar sign underscore equal side tilde. So that would have returned us zero, which is the index of the first matching thing, but then the, when we call that tilde on an integer, we're going to flip bits, which is how we're going to get negative one. I told you it was a hard one. I, yeah. All right, well. But nice work, congrats. Yeah, I've... A round of applause for all of the contestants. All right, thank you for sticking with me while that ran pretty far over. Uh, just a couple of special thanks to Ufu for helping me with the talk always, Kevin Murphy for helping me with my CFP, Matthias Richard and Kevin Newton for supplying me with some of these evil Ruby syntaxes. This has been a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much. Again, I'm Drew Bragg, Code and the Code Encoders who code it. Philly RB on the internet and all things. Happy to answer questions afterwards. Enjoy the rest of RailsConf.